Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields on the show this evening. We have Oliver Dunford, attorney at Pacific Legal Foundation, and Andrew Pat, secretary of the uh, Sacramento, Sacramento County Libertarian Party. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're on the air on uh, accesssacramento.org, uh, as well as uh, Channel 17 in Sacramento, cable channels all over the place, and uh, uh, on YouTube is where we're archived. So you can look at this show and many other shows if you go to YouTube. Uh, you know, back during the McCarthy uh, era, the uh, left was fond of saying that Republicans and McCarthy were finding communists under the rug or under the bed. Now the tables have turned and the Democrats are finding Ruskies under the Trump bed or everywhere else uh, to do with the Trump campaign. In fact, it's gotten to the point where uh, the uh, uh, Attorney General's office has, support, has uh, appointed uh, a special counsel to, uh, to check everything out. Robert Mueller, former head of the FBI, is now going to investigate the Russian connection uh, of the Trump administration. Two questions. One, is there anything to it? Is there anything at all to uh, the allegations that uh, Trump has been, has been or was during the campaign cooperating with the Russians in any way, shape, or, or form, or is it all just a bunch of a bunch of uh, sour grapes because they, they lost the campaign? Uh, well, it seems with Trump the most likely uh, answer is just incompetence. Uh, if, if somebody in his <laughs> campaign was talking to the Russians, um, it's possible he just ignored it or didn't know about it. Um, but Mueller will uh, seems to be respected by both sides. Uh, so if something's there, uh, he'll find it. Uh, but this could make uh, some of the Democrats nervous too. Uh, because if there are uh, the hacking by uh, the Russians into the DNC server, uh, who knows what they'll find uh, with that. So um, it can work both ways, but uh, it, it does seem um, uh, ironic at best that the, the Democrats are now worried about the Russians. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, the, uh, the original uh, uh, story got started when uh, stories about hacks of the DNC uh, emails John Podesta and other uh, people's emails were, were hacked by, supposedly, by, allegedly by the Russians, who right. knows. Uh, and, but it may have been by a Democratic uh, Party or a DNC staffer, Seth Rich comes to mind. Uh, but anyway, it eventually got leaked to WikiLeaks. And WikiLeaks, you know, handed it out, passed it out, you know, put it, you know posted it to the, to the internet, and, uh, you know, and uh, it made, the information made the, the Clinton campaign look really, really guilty of a whole lot of things, from, from uh, email abuses to uh, uh, any number of other things. So it was making the Clinton campaign look bad, is how this whole thing got started. Now, obviously, Trump would have an interest in, in making that happen, but so would all, of, uh, all the rest of his uh, primary opponents when it comes to that. Right. It, if Trump took advantage of information that was leaked, um, who wouldn't have done that? Uh, but so far, uh, yeah, I think the evidence of collusion between Trump himself and Putin uh, doesn't look like there's much there. Okay. Now, but the thing, uh, now a special counsel has been, uh, has been appointed. A special counsel essentially is somebody who answers to no one, answers to the attorney general, but the attorney general is right. going to fire him? I don't think so. Uh, that would be political suicide, although it was political suicide to fire Comey. Why, right. you know, uh, we have a, you know, a very clumsy administration to <laughs> say the right. least. But the, the question I have now is, uh, since a special counsel has essentially unlimited budget, unlimited power, and can you know, look wherever he darn well pleases, we live in a world where uh, uh, somebody wrote a book called uh, uh, Three Felonies a Day. Mm -hmm. We live in a world where there are so many rules, regulations, and uh, laws that it's damn near impossible to get through a day, much less a week or two without committing some sort of uh, crime, certainly some sort of uh, misstep which would be politically damaging. And if you've got a special counsel who is able to investigate every, everything that, the, that Trump did, everything that everybody uh, on his paid campaign sta staff did, everything that uh, everybody that supported Trump ever, ever did, they're going to find something. Right. It's, it's impossible. You know, it's, it, it would boggle the mind if they find nothing. That's right. I, I, I learned this week that, uh, remember when Martha Stewart was convicted for lying to the, to the feds uh, because they, they couldn't find any evidence that she had broken any security law, securities laws. Uh, Comey was involved in that investigation. Uh, so you're right. If they, if they start looking for something, they can, they can find it if they want to. 
because there, there are just so many laws right. and so many intrusive laws That's and right. so many ridiculous laws that you know the, uh, not knowing the law is no defense well then everybody's guilty because That's right. not, not everybody knows all 10 15 20 however many a thousand pages of the federal code not to mention state and local code uh, right. exist you, just, right. you can't you can't know all you can't. of the law it, and it, it takes uh, it, it takes an army of lawyers to uh, to get through uh, small pieces of the law yeah. um, so anytime I hear people complain that there are too many lawyers, I, I always tell them there's too many laws. <laughs> and and kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's right. Kind of a, kind of a, you know, a circular filing, filing, firing squad right. thing going on there. Too many laws, too many lawyers making laws. Right. But, but yeah. Okay, so, so we're, what we're looking at is a Trump administration that largely because of his own clumsiness, to put it politely, <laughs> Is getting himself in more and more trouble all the time, tweet, tweeting, in, you know, inadvisably, and not seeking the counsel of people who have been around Washington a little bit longer than he has, which is what 100 days. Uh, really stepping in it all the time. Now, as I'm obviously not a Trump supporter, never have been, and I, you know, I, what I wonder about though is this: if the Democrats are so bound and determined to get rid of Trump. Should they not be careful of what they wish for? Do they really want a President Mike Pence? Right, would they want a, uh, someone who is more conservative? More uh, conservative than Trump. And, and competent. Uh, and competent, and for all intents and purposes, squeaky clean. That's right. Uh, yeah, I, it, we'd probably get the same judges. Trump, Trump has done a good job appointing uh, judges so far, nominating judges. Uh, and otherwise, he's been kind of all over the place. Uh, the, but I, yeah, I don't think the Democrats would be real happy with President Pence. So I, I, I'm just at a loss to understand what the, what the uh, what do they call it the opposition or the what do they call it the, the loyal opposition. No, they call it there's a, the resistance. The resistance. Yeah, uh, for the life of me, I can't figure out what the resistance is trying to do other than vent their anger that their candidate didn't win. I, I think that's I think that's a big part of it. Just a just an unwillingness to accept the election, and uh, and they're mad and they want somebody to do something about it. They don't have any power, so. But given the fact that there's a special counsel involved now, Ladbrokes of London is laying odds of 11 to 1 that Trump will be impeached during his first, and of course, if he's impeached only, uh, term. <laughs> 11 to 1, that's 55 percent that he'll, that he'll be impeached. 11 to 10. What? 11 to 10. 11 to 10, 55 yeah. percent. Right. 55 percent odds. Trump going to be impeached? I don't know. I, I think, for one thing, uh, there's still a lot of people who like Trump and who would see any attempt at impeachment as uh, an effort by the elites to, to get back at the guy that they put in. Um, so the, there'd be this narrative out there that the establishment GOP and the Democrats got together to, to get out the guy who was going to come in and drain the swamp. Um, I, I think, at least for now, that's going to hold off on the impeachment. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you talk about draining the swamp. Uh, and he, you know, Trump you know, made noises about draining the swamp, as did Bernie Sanders for that matter. But when he was elected, he, of, he appointed Goldman Sachs guys to Treasury, Mnuchin and, and several others appointed to the financial posts in the government. Goldman Sachs is not draining the swamp. No, well, there's a, as all libertarians can uh, appreciate, there's the uh, idea of regulatory capture that once, uh, if you're going to put government in charge of, of doing certain things, you're going to need experts to run it. And so who knows how to, uh, who knows the finances better than somebody from Goldman Sachs. But uh, it, it's a dangerous game to play when you have uh, the foxes watching the hen house. And, and Mnuchin is, uh, I think, probably the definition of a that's fox. Right, that's right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it's really going to be interesting to watch. Um, the other, I mean, we, you know, we like Justice uh, Gorsuch, uh, you know, I yes. think an excellent appointment to the U.S. Supreme Court. We like uh, the fact that uh, Damien Schiff, PLF attorney, has been uh, nominated, hasn't been uh, confirmed yet, but nominated for the uh, Court of Federal Claims, I That's believe right. it was. That's right. Uh, are there any of the judicial nominations that have come forward so far that we uh, that that uh, libertarians would be dissatisfied <coughs> with on, on balance? I don't think so. No, from what I've uh, seen, he's he's uh, stuck to that list that he put out uh, when he was campaigning, uh, and I'm sure libertarians will have uh, issues with 
one or two of the judges or some of their opinions, but I, I think as a whole, uh, that's probably been, from a libertar libertarian perspective, I think that's uh, certainly Trump's uh, biggest uh, selling point. But then we take a look at the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions. What? <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a guy that wants to uh, throw the book at marijuana offenders. He mm -hmm. wants to seek, he's you know, come out and said, I want maximum sentencing for marijuana uh, offenders. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're guilty of uh, smoking pot, we're gonna throw the book at you. Yeah. This at a time when in the last election, just about every jurisdiction, every state that voted for medical marijuana or recreational mar marijuana uh, legalization or decriminalization, I don't think, I don't think any, of, any of those elections failed. Obviously, the majority of the American people are in favor of legalizing or at least decriminalizing marijuana. What in the world was Trump doing appointing a throwback to the Nixon era? Uh, <laughs> I, I think it, more of that has to, be with, has to do with immigration, I think. Uh, is, is my guess. Uh, uh, Sessions was an early supporter. Uh, he's taken a hard line in immigration um, to the extent that the, uh, the, the uh, DOJ needs to step up enforcement. He was the guy to do it. Um, and, well, and I, you know, I, don't, I, I can't imagine Trump has a problem with marijuana. Uh, not that he smokes it, but I, I just doesn't, doesn't no, seem he doesn't like drink either, which makes drink. me suspicious. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But it doesn't seem like he, he would run around uh, locking people up for that. So I, I wonder if that's just a, something he's willing to live with because of the immigration issue. I, I okay, don't know. well, going, going to the immigration issue, we're talking about a time and place. I mean, I, can, I understand where he can appeal, make a populist appeal mm -hmm. to the people who are losing jobs in Pennsylvania and Ohio uh, who think it's because of immigration. It's not, it's automation and, and basically, you know, the machines are doing the work that they used to do. That's what's really happening. But people can blame it on immigrants. That's an easy, an easy scapegoat, right. and it might play well during the election season. But even Trump can read the numbers and know that more people are moving from more, more uh, Hispanics, more Mexicans are moving back to Mexico than are moving to the United States. That's right. Out migration is bigger than immigration right now. Right. Uh, so you know, why do you need a wall to keep them in? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There's or to so, keep there's, us in. There's a lot about uh, Trump I, I don't get. It's hard to, it's hard to know. Okay, well, um, we, we, we may, okay. <laughs> who, was the, who was the Roman Empire that fiddled while Rome burned? Nero. Oh, Nero. Nero, Nero, yeah. Nero? Yeah, okay. Is, is, uh, is Trump America's Nero? <laughs> the guy that will preside over the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the breakdown of the American Empire? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we're, I think, uh, you know, we believe, Not quite that we believe in civil society uh, here. I, I, you know, the, the, uh, the executive officer of uh, one branch of government uh, should not uh, result in the, in the falling apart of the American uh, empire. Okay. But it's interesting. Uh, while, we're, while we're fighting over whether there are Russians under the bed, in the United States, and that's about all the all the, the media can, can pay any attention to at all. Under the radar, China and Russia and Pakistan and every other country in the in Asia and uh, and Europe, Eastern Europe, are cooperating to build the new Silk Road. They call it the uh, One Belt One Road Infrastructure Project. They're talking about the Chinese in particular are talking about laying more concrete than it's been laid uh, in the United States, I think, in the 20th century. They've probably mm -hmm. already done that. But they're talking about building a, a, a rail and road and uh, ship infrastructure system that would make it possible for overland shipping from Beijing to Brussels, uh, a land uh, trading route that would make the U.S. rule of the seas kind of inconsequential. Um, and it would make a trading zone much larger than than the uh, the uh, what we control in the Americas. Uh, are we in a situation where uh, the uh, American Empire might be uh, uh, supplanted by a Eurasian Empire? Uh, I suppose it's possible, um, but is there much harm in in expanded trade? Uh, uh, none at all, except right. that we're talking about reducing trade. And right. One of the things that Trump campaigned on and is. Uh, 
Well, I, I won't say that he's followed up that much <laughs> on it, but he certainly campaigned on, you know, mm -hmm. getting rid of NAFTA, getting rid of uh, NATO, getting rid of, well, NATO's not trade, but getting rid of the, uh, trade agreements. Mm -hmm. He did get rid of the, uh, of the, the trade agreement w uh, in, in, in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, so w he, I mean, he's campaigned to a certain extent, uh, although he hasn't really acted on it, uh, on, on basically stopping trade, drastically curtailing trade, raising tariffs, et cetera. Yeah. It's interesting, though, he, he has kind of seen the light uh, and is now expanding trade with China. Yeah, well, I hope so. Uh, yeah, the, um, it might be good if we don't have to uh, patrol the seas all the, way, all the way around the world all the time. Um, I, I understand the, the uh, fears of China if it's being aggressive and uh, uses its power to prevent other people from trading from other, pe other, other countries and uh, individuals from using the seas to trade. Uh, but uh, as a general matter, more trade is, is good. So let the, uh, let the Eurasians trade. Ladbrokes, the, uh, the, the British betting agency, has, has, is now laying odds that uh, Trump will be impeached in his first and only term at 11 mm -hmm. to 10, uh, 55 percent. Is that going to happen? Uh, not yet, I don't think. I think okay. we still have some time. Okay. Lois Lerner was in the news recently. Well, she's been in the news ever since the Obama administration when, they were, when she uh, and other members of the IRS were going after the Tea Party in every way, shape, and form that they could uh, think of, particularly by uh, basically holding up Tea Party organizations in red tape, making it impossible for them to get their 501c3 uh, nonprofit status, which they needed in order to raise funds and to be uh, as effective as they wanted to be. Uh, and it was a strictly political, strictly a political vendetta that came straight from the White House, as far as we can tell, and <coughs> illegal uh, on, on many different uh, levels. Lois Lerner is uh, afraid now to testify in public uh, on her role in preventing uh, Tea Party organizations from being effective, because she's afraid that, well, what, what is she afraid of? <laughs> uh, who knows? If you don't have anything to hide, you shouldn't be uh, afraid to testify, I would think. Uh, well, the whole the whole story is shady. The, the way they released it, uh, they had some they had a plan to ask a question while she was giving some presentation, and they tried to release the story very quietly, and uh, it kept getting steam, and uh, people kept looking into it. Then it, you know, then it was just a, some local officer officers in Cincinnati who went rogue and were doing things improperly, and then but the more the more we learned, the more it, it did. It went back to D.C. Um, don't know if it went directly to the White House, but it certainly was in it certainly was in D.C. where uh, Lois Lerner was was running things. The the uh, effort to stop the Tea Party from getting their, that's right their uh, nonprofit status, right. among other things. Right. Yeah. I was curious to know why it took so long for her to start testifying. It seems like they should have been taken care of a couple years ago. Well, yeah. I mean, the the, the, the Tea Party uh, activism was took place during the 2012 or prior to the 2012 yeah. election, which is what uh, five years ago now, six mm -hmm. years ago now, uh, when they were when they were you know when all this was coming down. Yeah. Why did it take so long for the long arm of the law to uh, uh, bring uh, Lois Lerner to maybe testifying? Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. I get in trouble if I don't do things. <laughs> Um, well, I, I, you know, the, the, the biggest question to me, though, for the, for the whole uh, Trump agenda, Trump administration, is this. There's a lot of things that we like that Trump is doing. A lot of things we don't like. We don't like immigra you know, his immigration policy. We don't like his rhetoric on trade. We don't like uh, uh, a number of things. But one thing that we do like are obviously the judicial appointments so far. And we like uh, the uh, fact that uh, he's done some uh, deregulatory uh, initiatives uh, in the regulatory agencies that make a whole lot of sense, and he's talking about tax reform. So far, it's all it's all been talk, and he was going to reappeal and replace Obamacare. That's that's you know, sort of happening, maybe. Um, if the agenda, if the front page is story after story after story on Russians under the bed, will the Trump agenda? Be able to move forward, particularly tax cuts, well, uh, 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 Obamacare reform, and and uh, regulatory reform. Uh, it certainly, will delay things. I would think uh, you have a number of Republicans who are uh, asking for Trump to turn over, or the or the D or the FBI to turn over the memos uh, that Comey has written, 
uh, after his meetings with Trump. Um, so I think the, the Republicans know they're in a tough spot. Uh, all this is getting a lot of coverage, and so they, um, they I, I think they think it's too early to start doing anything, but they also don't want to be caught uh, with information coming out, so they, wa they want to get the information. Th by that you mean? I'm sorry, the Republicans want the information. Uh, the congressional Republicans want as much information as they can about uh, Trump and the, and the Russian meddling or whatever how they want to call it. Uh, and, and all that takes time, and that, and that takes time away from Obamacare uh, repeal and tax reform and, and all of it. So I, I think it is a, unfortunately, I think it will uh, slow things down. Well, it seems to me like when you're talking about tax reform in particular, you kind of got a, a circular firing squad among Republicans. You've got uh, the uh, deficit hawks saying no, no tax cuts unless it's so paid for. In other mm -hmm. words, uh, you, you can reduce one tax, but you've got to raise another tax someplace else or reduce spending. And we all know that nobody, you know, there's no reduced spending on the table that, that means a heck of a lot. You reduce spending in, the, in 10 years out. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Or they're talking about minor trims in EPA and a few other regulatory agencies when in fact, the bulk, <coughs> two-thirds of the spending is uh, in transfer payments. It's Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and, uh, and, the national, and interest on the national debt. Mm -hmm. that's, where the, that's where the real money is. Uh, very little money is being spent on the regulatory agencies. And they're talking about, and already have, increased defense spending, which is the other big, big chunk of spending. So cutting spending is essentially ta been taken off the table by Trump for all intents and purposes. That's not going to happen. So you've got the deficit hawks. Uh, among the Republicans saying, you know, we're not going to cut taxes unless you reduce spending, or uh, if you re re reduce one tax, you've got to raise another. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got that. And then you've got the Democrats who are going to be against any tax cut whatsoever because, well, they're just against tax cuts. Mm -hmm. They're in favor of raising taxes where, wherever and whenever they can. So they're not going to, you know, you're not going to pull any Democrats across the aisle. And, and then you've got the, uh, the moderate Republicans who would probably want to reduce different taxes than the more, uh, the Freedom Caucus, for instance. Is there any way at all that they're <laughs> all going to get on the same page? I, I, I don't know. I, there's so many interests that have to be uh, served here. Uh, just a, one example is the mortgage interest deduction. Uh, it seems like the only people who, who benefit from it are, are the wealthy. Uh, they use it for their second and third houses, and yet uh, it, it remains on the books. Um, <laughs> So there are lots of little uh, things like that in the tax code that um, have have their supporters. Uh, you'd think that they, hopefully, that they could agree on a on a tax simplification plan, uh, reform it and lower the rates and simplify the tax code. Yeah, but of course, it, like you said, if, it, tax simplification means that everybody who is who is now benefiting from the right. tax code and and their legion, mm -hmm. their you know, uh, you mentioned uh, homeowners. Well, that's one. Another is. Uh, anybody who makes a charitable deduction, right. uh, another is, uh, uh, you know, the whole depreciation and, and uh, uh, expensing uh, issue, uh, you know, and, and 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 last but not least, it's the it's the bookkeepers, the uh, the CPAs. The, right. uh, it's a huge industry that makes their uh, it's entirely dependent on a complex tax code in order to uh, to make the big bucks. Uh, that's right. And that's attorneys and, and CPAs yeah. and. Uh, uh, accounting houses and so forth, you know, they're making all kinds of money. Not to mention the financial industry, they're making a lot of money because of the financialization of our society to a large extent. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a whole lot of people that are going to be against any simplification at all, and they're going to be uh, following public choice theory. They're going to say, well, you know what, we're going to make a whole lot of noise, we're going to spend a whole lot of money on uh, funding your, uh, you know, your uh, primary opposition uh, in the next election unless you keep our small little, just tiny little uh, tax perk going because, you know, it's very small. I mean, it's only, you know, a nickel or a dime uh, in, in taxes. So you, you got to keep this little, you know, special deal right. for us. And, of course, they're all doing it. So all those nickels and dimes add up and you end up with essentially what you've got already. That's right. Or you have, or you have politicians holding things up, uh, waiting for the lobbyists to come in and, and pour money uh, at them. They uh, strategically offer bills or don't offer bills and tell the, tell the lobbyists to uh, show up with the cash? Well, we've, we've seen that the, the Trump bump has been a stock market uh, jump from, uh, from the, the day after the election until, until recently. The stock market is uh, hovering near all-time highs. Uh, Price-earnings ratio are hovering near all-time highs. 
uh, the uh, you know every way that you want to take a look at what uh, what stock evaluation uh, stock valuations are is that they're very very high and uh, most of that has been based on regulatory reform tax cuts and uh, infrastructure uh, build out well where's the infrastructure build out is that happening <laughs> Or any chance of it happening? I, I don't think so. Um, although, I mean, that's one place where you could get democratic support. Th that's what I was going to say. If you can get uh, support from from everyone, you, it's it's on a one trillion dollar spending bill, <laughs> including the wall uh, as the well wall, as highways right, right. and, and byways and right. roads. Well, Mexico is paying for the wall. Oh yeah, so that's not that part, yeah. in our budget. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. right. <laughs> the question, of course, is from a financial standpoint, is the uh, is the Trump bump, is the uh, expansion in the value of financial assets, is that coming to an end? I, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. I think the, uh, um, I think the economy can, again, like, like the American empire can survive one, uh, one bad president. Uh, I think the question that would uh, ultimately resolve this is, is when there's some uh, certainty and if there's all these questions up in the air in terms of Obamacare and what the tax code is going to look like. And in, I think until that's resolved, there's going to be uh, uncertainty, and that certainly th threatens the, uh, the economy. Um, I, you know, I look at the uh, next appointment, one of the next appointments that Trump's going to make, and that's going to be for the Federal Reserve uh, Board uh, Chairman Yellen. Her term is coming to an end. Any, any hope that he'll make an uh, intelligent choice <laughs> for Federal Reserve Chairman? Uh, Ron Paul? Go ahead, Deb, that'd be great. Pardon me? Ron Paul? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's going to happen, right? Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. Uh, actually, there's a good story uh, about Mises. Supposedly, uh, somebody asked him if he were the economic minister and the economy was going in the tank, what's the first thing he would do? And he said, resign. <laughs> <laughs> Ludwig, Ludwig von Mises. That's right. The father of Austrian economics. That's right. The, uh, the, uh, the, the resident scholar of right. uh, libertarian economic thought. So if, if Ron Paul wants to go to the Fed and, and resign and shut the doors, that'd be fine. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, if, you, if the Federal Reserve disappeared tomorrow, yeah. there would be a, a short period of, uh, of uh, economic turbulence followed by a, uh, a springtime of economic growth beyond our wildest dreams. Right. If we went back to a, uh, a gold standard or a Bitcoin standard or you know, anything yeah. other than a, a fake money standard that right. we're on right now. Uh, and, uh, but I, unfortunately, I, I don't see Trump, who has built his business empire largely on borrowed money, <laughs> which he quite often doesn't pay back, I don't see him being particularly uh, uh, interested. That's the show for this week. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place, on the Libertarian Counterpoint. Thank you very much for being part of the show, and uh, have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.